got just a simple grid on here bound to some people objects. And when I click the update data button, what will happen is the, the view model will make a change to one of the underlying objects that are bound to this grid. As that happens, the event will fire to say that some of the value have, has changed within the grid, and then we can do something. So we'll click update data, and what that will do is change Zoe to Chris, and that's the explicit change. And what's happening as a change as a result of the event is the background color is changing. So when we do that and then step out of there, you can see that the background has changed. So let me show you how it's done. Now I want to take you around to, to take a look at a few classes and things before we start putting some code in. So this is a window and basically all we have in here right now is our XAM data grid and also a button that handles uh, initiating the change in, in the data. So right now I have uh, the field settings set to allow edit to be false It's because we want to read only right now. And um, let's set auto generate fields equal to false as well. So basically it's just a window with a grid on it. If we take a look at the code behind, uh, basically the data source is being set to uh, the people property off of our view model. And when you click the update data button, it goes to the view model and runs this, this method. So let's take a look at what happens here. Obviously this is very, very simple for demonstration purposes, but all I'm doing is going in at index zero of, of the people list, changing the first name to Chris. Now you would never do this. Um, but the only thing that's that's important to note is that the the person class implements I notify property change. So when the first name is changed within the person class here, this is now the first name property within the person class. Um, we're we're raising the property changed event in order to notify WPF that one of those changes has been made. All right, so now that we know all that, we can kind of begin setting this up. So the first thing that we need to do is on the grid, we want to handle that event to say, when the data value changed, we need an event handler. So data value changed, we'll create that event handler. And now we've got that um, method available that we can do something with. The next piece is we have to put in uh, a little bit of XAML. And it, it's actually a lot of digging just to set a couple properties. So I'm just going to paste this in here. And I'll add some white space that you can see really clearly um, what's new and what's not. Okay. So what we're doing is going in, into the field layouts. And within that layout, we're taking a look at an individual field. Now we're, we're telling it that we just want to look at the first name and we're setting the field settings for the first name to say that the data value change notifications are active. So we're setting that true for that individual item. And then we also have a changed history limit. Now there's a history involved so that you can have an idea of, of what the value in this, this cell used to be and do some interesting things with it. Right now, I'm just setting this to one. We're keeping it very basic just, just for this video. So with that, what we need to do is then go and implement uh, just a little bit of code within our event handler. So let's drop down into the code behind and we can simply take a look at our event args and we can say cell value presenter and set the background equal to uh, brushes. And it looks like we need a using statement here. So let's come up here and we'll do using system windows media. And I'm just using a default brush at this point. And um, blanched almond. That sounds like a, a wonderful color to use. So again, what's happening is we're updating the underlying data source that's bound to the grid using this update data. We're coming in here, we're making an explicit change, and the iNotify property events are firing at this point. Um, and the grid will then recognize that there's been a change, and then the data value change event is firing. So we're making an explicit change on the, on the object, and then the event is firing, and now we're changing the background. So if we run this, Here's our grid, click update data. Zoe's been changed to Chris and we have the background changed. Now the, the history becomes important at this point when you really want to extend this and you can take a look at what, it's, what the value's been before and maybe change that background or the border or whatever back and forth between different colors. But this gets you the basics of how to get everything set up. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.